This is case problem 1 of tutorial 1. We begin by opening a file called Alltech. We'll find that in the Excel 1 case 1 folder and then we're asked to save it as Alltech Bicycles. So we'll choose File, Save As, and then we're going to call it Alltech Bicycles. And I don't like to use spaces in my file name, so I'm just going to put those words next to each other. I'll click Save. It asks us in Step 2 to insert three new rows at the top of the Sheet 1 worksheet. I'm currently looking at the Sheet 1 worksheet, so if I highlight three rows and then right-click, I can choose Insert. Because I first highlighted three rows, it inserts three rows. So in A1, they want us to enter the following lines, Alltech Bicycles, Income Statement, and they want those lines to be broken, and I'll show you how to do that. So we'll type in Alltech Bicycles, and then we'll click Alt-Enter to break the line, and we'll type the rest of the heading. When I press Enter, you'll notice that it did widen the row. It doesn't look very good right now, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. In A2, they want us to type for the years ended. And moving on to step four, we're asked to fill in some numbers for net sales and cost of sales. So I'm going to position myself in row five under the 2013 column and begin to type the numbers in. I'll pause the video for a moment until I get that typing done. In step seven, it asks me to calculate the gross margin. So I'll position my cursor in cell C8. And here I want to subtract the cost of sales from net sales. So we start with equal because it's a formula. And we can click on net sales or C6, type a minus sign, click on cost of sales, and press enter. And the difference is the gross margin. I'll stop the video while I complete that same formula in the next two. In row 17, they want us to calculate, I'm sorry, row 15, they want us to calculate the total operating expenses. So I'll click on cell C15, and I'm going to sum up these expenses. The easiest way to do that is to use your Auto Sum button to verify that it's correct, and once you know that it's correct, you'll press Enter. You can then use your fill handle and fill that same formula to the side so you calculate it all the way across. So now we're going to calculate our operating income. Operating income is the difference between sales and expenses, or in our case, gross margin and, ex and total operating expenses. So again, it's a formula. We start with equal. We'll take our gross margin and deduct by using a minus sign our total operating expenses. And so that turns out to be 4095 and then again we'll use our fill handle to fill across. So we have some other income from some other source. We need to add that until we come up with our pre-tax income. So we'll be adding these two numbers together. So I'll start with equal. I'll click on the operating income number. I'll type a plus and I'll click on our other income. There is our pre-tax income then we have to pay taxes. So our net income will be our pre-tax income minus our income taxes. So again, a formula starts with equal. We'll take our pre-tax income, or C19, and we'll deduct, by using the minus sign, our income taxes. That leaves us with $3,211. I'll fill that across to the right. All right, and then our last calculation is the earnings per share. So these are our earnings. The net income is our earnings. And we have to divide those earnings among our shareholders. So the calculation here would be equal to net income, or C22, divided by the number of shares. And that turns out to be about 88 cents per share. And then I'll fill that number across. We're asked in step 13 to run the spell checker and to look for misspellings and to ignore the spelling of Alltech. So we're going to find that under the Review tab. And here's your spelling feature. You can also press F7 to activate that. So I'll click OK. It says, Spell check is complete. You are good to go. 
All right, that's encouraging. That doesn't mean that we don't have errors, though. And now we'll move on to step 14. It tells us to go to cell A18. So let's locate that cell where it says other income. And they want us to capitalize the word income. So the, way, the best way to do it is to double click on the cell and then we can modify that right in the cell. Or you could go up to the formula bar and we could modify it there. When you're finished, be sure to press enter so Excel knows that you're finished with that edit. In step 15, they ask us to increase the width of column A to 18 characters. So if you position your cursor between the column headings of A and B, and you click and drag, you can drag to the right until you get near 18 characters, and never be too worried whether you're 18 and a half or 17 and a half. That's perfectly okay. They want us to increase the width of column B to 25 characters. So again, we'll click between the B and the C, and we'll drag to the right until we get somewhere around 25 characters. And adjust the row height of row 1. I'll position my cursor here at row 1, and you can see it's too high. Now that we widen the column, we don't need that much room. So if you position your cursor between the 1 and the 2 and you double click, double cli clicking gives you the best fit. In step 16, they ask us to rename sheet 1 and to call it income statement. So I'll double click on the sheet tab, type in my new name. I don't like to use spaces in my sheet tab name, so I'll just type it all together like that, and then you press enter. Sheet 2, they want us to call documentation. And then they ask us to drag the documentation sheet to move it to the left of the income statement. So I'll just click on it and drag it over. And I'll let go when I see the triangle in the correct place. And then we're going to type in the information given in step 17. So let's go to the documentation sheet. We're on cell A1, and we begin. And then you'll enter your own name here in cell B3 as the author. And today's date in cell B4. Save the workbook. You can just click this little Save button, or you can use Control-S. And let's see how this will look when we print. So we'll go to File Print, which takes us to the Backstage view. Here's our documentation sheet. In order to print the entire workbook, you'll have to go to the Settings area, and the default is to print only the active sheet. If you click the down arrow, you can choose Print Entire Workbook. At that point, you'll see that you have two pages, and if you click on the Next Page button, you'll see Page 2. So then you would click Print to print the entire workbook. Be sure to save your file when you finish. This is the end of the video.